Namaste. Welcome to the Indian Knowledge Systems Primer course for children. The next is the Bhuta Sankhya system of number representation. Bhuta Sankhya. So this word Bhuta Sankhya is a compound word. It is made of two words. One is Bhuta, the other is Sankhya. The word Bhuta means object or being. The word Sankhya means number. So what does Bhuta, Bhuta Sankhya mean? It means the number that is associated with beings. Let us see how. Now let us try to understand this Bhuta Sankhya system in a simple way. When I say a word, try to think of a number that is associated with this word. I say fingers. How many, what number comes to your mind? 10, right? I say eyes. You have two eyes, right? I say seasons. The seasons are six seasons. Like this, commonly used words and culturally well-known words are used in this Bhuta Sankhya number system. Now, let us look at the traditionally used Bhutas by the Indian mathematicians to represent numbers. First, zero. That is, kham, akasha. Kham or akasha both means space. Space is infinite, right? But it also represents shunya, that is zero. So, kham, akasha and all the synonyms for space represent zero. Then, for one, we have bhumi, rupa, chandra, Ratripa and Indu. The word Bhumi represents one. Why? We only have one earth, right? Not just the word Bhumi, but then the synonym of the word Bhumi. All the words that mean Bhumi will represent one. For example, we have another word called Prithvi. Prithvi also means earth. It represents one. Similarly, we have Chandra. Chandra, we have only one moon, right? So, it represents one. Ratripa, Indu are all synonyms of moon. So, it represents one. Then we have Netra. Netra means eyes. How many eyes do we have? We have two eyes. Bahu means hands. We have two hands. Karana, ears. We have two ears. Janu, knees. We have two knees. Now, let us take Agni. There were Three Agnis in each of the household during Vedic times. That is why Agni represents the number three. Hutashana and Vahni are the synonyms of the word Agni. In our Itihasas, there are three Ramas. That is Balarama, Raghurama and Parashurama. Gunas. There are three Gunas. That is Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. There are four Vedas. That is why Vedas represent the number 4. In our tradition, it is said that there were 4 great oceans. That is why the words that represent oceans such as Samudra, Abdi, Varidhi and Arnava represent the number 4. Ishu, Shara and Bana, all these words mean arrows. Arrows represent the number 5. How? It is said that Kamadeva or Manmatha has five arrows. That is why these, these words represent the number five. Ritu. Ritu means season. We all know that there are six seasons, right? The same way, Rasa. Rasa means six taste. So, these words represent six. Parvata, Aga, Achala, Giri, Kshmadhara, all these words mean mountain. In our Puranas, there were seven great mountains. That is why these words represent the number seven. We have all heard Sapta Rishi, right? So, Rishi, Muni, these words represent seven. Swara. In Carnatic music, there are Sapta Swaras. That is why it is seven Swara. Ashwa, Turaga, Vajin and Haya. These words mean horse. The chariot of Surya Deva has seven horses. That is why these represent seven. Next, Hastin, Gaja. 
Diggaja. These words mean elephants. Why do we associate elephant with the number 8? So, there are 8 directions, right? The Ashtadik. So, in our tradition, we believe that all these 8 directions are guarded by the elephants and the serpents. So, that is why Hastin, Gaja, Diggaja. These words, which has the meaning elephant, represent number 8. Likewise, the words Naga, Sarpa and Ahi, which means snakes, these represent 8. Next, we have Nanda. In the Nanda dynasty, there were 9 great kings. That's why we have the number 9 for the word Nanda. Then, we have Pankti. Pankti is a chandas which has 10 syllables. Then, Rudra. There are 11 Rudras in our Itihasas and Puranas. Surya, Arka, Bhanu, Aditya, all these words mean sun. We have 12 suns in our tradition. Here are few more words which are associated with numbers. For example, we have Titi. There are 15 Tithis in a Paksha. We have Nakshatra, Bham and Tara. All these are the synonym for the stars. In our Indian tradition, there are 27 stars. Danta. Danta means teeth. We have 32 teeth. Devas. In our Indian tradition, the classes of Devas sum total to 33. So, the synonyms Devata, Vibhuda are all representation of the number 33. Let us see few examples. Here are some interesting examples that we have made to show that a same number can be represented by two different words. Let us look at the word. The word is Akasha Gunanetra Chandraha. Akasha. So, Akasha represents zero. Guna. There are three gunas. Then Netra. Netra means eyes. So, there are two eyes. Chandra. Chandra, we have only one. One. So, when you reverse this, we get one, two, three, zero. Now, the same number can be represented by the, by a different word. How? Let us take this word. This is Kagni Bahu Bhumayaha. This is Ka plus Agni plus Bahu plus Bhumayaha. Now, Ka means Akasha. That is, the value is 0. Then, Agni. There are 3 Agnis. 3. Bahu. There are, Bahu means hands. There are 2 hands. Then, Bhumi. Bhumi means earth. So, we have 1. If you reverse this, again, you get the value 1, 2, 3, 0. See, the same number is represented by two different words. So, this gives the poets the liberty to use different words of different lengths to represent the same number. Here is a big word that is given by Bhattotpala in his commentary of Brihat Samhita. Let us try to decode this word. The word here is Kakashta Muni Ramashvi Netrashta Shararatri Paha. Now, when you break this word, it's Kha plus Kha plus Ashta Muni Rama Ashvi Netra Ashta Shararatri Paha. Kha means Akasha. So, we write 0. Again, Kha 0. Ashta itself means 8. Muni, there are Saptarishis, so 7. Rama represents 3. Ashvi, Ashvi or the Ashwini Devatas represents 2. Netra is eyes, 2. Ashta again 8. Shara, we saw that Shara means arrow. There are 5 arrows with Manmatha, that's why 5. Ratri Paha is a synonym for Chandra, that is moon. So, we write 1. 
Now, when we reverse this, we get this value 1, 5, 8, 2, 2, 3, 7, 8, 0, 0. It's very simple and at the same time interesting, isn't it? How did the mathematicians use this Bhuta Sankhya number system to represent huge numbers? The great mathematician and astronomer called Madhava gave the value of pi correct to 11 decimal places using the Bhuta Sankhya number system. Now, let us see this verse. Now, let's break it into small, small words. We have Vibudha. So, Vibudha means Devas. So, the, we saw that the class of Devas sum up to 33. So, Vibudha represents 33. And what is the next word? We have Netra. Netra means eyes. There are two eyes. We have Gaja here. Gaja means elephant. We have eight elephants. Then the next word here is Ahi. Ahi means snake. So there are eight snakes. Hutashana. So we have Hutashana here. Hutashana represents three. Hutashana means Agni. Then we have three. So three means three. Then we have Guna. There are three Gunas. We have Veda. There are four Vedas. Then we have Bha. Bha means Nakshatra. There are 27 Nakshatras. Varana. Varana means elephant. There are eight elephants. Then Bahu. Bahavaha means Bahu means hands. There are two hands. When we assign the values for each of these words and then reverse it, we get something like this. So, the number would be 2, 8, 2, 7, 4, 3, 3, 3, 8, 8, 2, 3, 3. In the next line is mentioned Navanikharva. So, the value of Navanikharva is Nava means 9 and then Nikharva is 10 to the power 11. So, when we divide the obtained number by 9 into 10 to the power 11, we get a value of the pi. So, that is 3.14159265359 We'll understand pi and its nuances in the later sessions. Thanks to Bhuta Sankhya number system, now we have got the value of pi correct to 11 decimal places. And we have also got to learn a fun verse. The advantage of the Bhuta Sankhya number system is that there are a lot of words in Sanskrit language which would represent the same numbers. So, it becomes very easy for the poets to compose verse in different meters. However, we should have a rich vocabulary to understand these words. These are some of the ingenious methods that our Indian mathematicians have used to represent the numbers. Thank you. Dhanyavadaha.